In this lab, we're going to go over a bunch of basic R operations, both for R and RStudio. All of the information uh, in this screencast is available on the course website in the tab for Lab 3. We'll direct you to this on Blackboard. Okay, what we're going to do is run through a whole bunch of different problems you'll be trying to solve in the lab. In this screencast, you'll see me talking about the problems and showing you examples of how to solve them. So let's start at the very beginning. RStudio. Do you know where the console is and what it does? So what we're looking at is RStudio. Uh, over here is the console area. It's got a tab that says console. It's got this little uh, arrow sign in blue and a cursor. If you press enter, you go to a new line. And by now you're probably familiar with the idea that we can enter in commands here and press enter and R is going to do something. So I've just uh, done a little bit of simple math. One plus one, we could do two times three. Uh, and uh, this is the console. It is one place where we can enter our code and run the R code. Number two, do you know where the editor window is and what it does? Well, the editor in window is up in the top left hand corner here. What I have displayed in the window is the R markdown file that I use to generate the this document that we're seeing in the viewer. So we could scroll down, we should be able to find question number two. Here it is. Do you know where the editor window is and what it does? So we're in the editor window right now and we can do lots of things if we wanted. We could add text, we could add our code. This is a place where we write things. Let's uh, move on to question number three. Do you know the difference between writing code in the editor, oops, in the editor window, and running code in the console? Let's take a look at that. I'm going to make some space in here. This is an R Markdown document. So we can write some code right here in our document. Uh, but first we need to make an R code block, just like this three back ticks, uh, left curly bracket, letter R, right curly bracket, a space, and three more back ticks. This will give us a little gray area and we could run some, or we could write some R code here. Let's do it. One plus one. All right, so what's happened? Nothing. We've just written this code. We haven't run the code. Let's uh, talk about the differences. If I save this, well, actually no. Let's just, um, first of all, show you what happens when we run the code in the console. I'm going to copy this. I used uh, Command C, I'm on a Mac. If you're on a PC, that would be Control C. Now I'm pasting this into the console window, pressing return. So I've run the code now in the console. I haven't run the code in the editor window. In an R Markdown document, you can run the code in the editor window by pressing the play button. And it will show you the result of the code right underneath the code block. All right. How about this next question? What is the environment tab and what does it show you? All right, the environment tab is up in the top right hand corner. We've got a little tab here called environment. There's other tabs, history is one of them. That shows you all of the code that you just recently ran. But let's click on environment. Notice it says the environment is empty. Let's fill up the environment with uh, a new variable. So in the environment 
we will be able to see the things that are currently in R's memory. Let's do that one way. We'll click the console tab. We're going to make a variable. I'm going to call it A. We're going to assign in a number, the number one. So this is the variable name. The left arrow followed by a dash means basically put in. So we're going to put a one into the variable A. I'm pressing return, enter. So now the variable A has the number one in it and we could see that R is storing our variable A because it shows up in the environment panel. For fun, let's uh, make another variable, but this time we're going to call it B and we're going to write it in our R markdown file that we're working in. Let's put the number three into B. Okay, I can press the play button Notice when I do this, I don't see any output. Nothing shows up underneath this gray code block. Nothing shows up. Uh, oh, actually, this line of code, uh, when I ran it, it shows me in, it shows it to me in the console. So it's showing that I ran this line of code. And it worked. We put a three into the letter or the variable B. And we could see that in the environment window. If you want to print out the contents of a variable, you can go into the console and type the name of the variable. Press, for example, B and press enter. And that's going to show us what's inside of B. We could also use print just like this. So we're saying print what's inside B and that does the same thing. What do you think is going to happen now that I've added two lines to our R code block? The first line puts a 3 in B. What does the second line do? Well, it should print out the contents of B. So if I press play, it will run both of the lines of code from the first to the second one. The first one puts a 3 in B, the second one prints it out, and now we can see that there is a 3 right there. Okay. Uh, how about this? How to clear the workspace? Well, what is the workspace? The workspace is R's memory for everything that you've stored in it. So far, R's memory only has two things in it an A and a B, and they're right here. How do we get rid of these things if we wanted to start fresh? Well, let's go up to the session option and go down to clear workspace. See what happens when we do that. It's gonna ask, uh, do we want to remove everything? This operation cannot be undone. Yep. All right, now we've cleared everything in the environment. Let me show you another way to do it. I'm, I'm going inside the code block. I'm going to add um, some code to put a one in A, a three in B. We'll run the code. Uh, notice that we've now made those variables appear in the environment. If you want to remove one thing at a time, you could use the remove command. That uh, we don't actually type remove, we just type rm. That's short for remove. So let's remove a, rm a, rm uh, parentheses, a parentheses. Press enter. And notice now a has been removed. I'll show you one more example here. Let's run all these lines of code. And we're now putting a number into each of the variables a, b, and c. If we want, we can remove more than one thing at a time. Let's see what happens if we do this. rm a comma b. 
Now we've removed the A and the B and we've left C. All right. What is the Files tab and what does it show you? Well, the Files tab is in the right bottom, uh, bottom right corner. We're currently looking at the Viewer. Let's click over to the Files tab. Now the Files tab is a way to look at any of the files on your computer. What you will be looking at here can depend on how you've previously navigated in your file system. So for example, if I'd been pressing some of these buttons, you might see other things like, oh, here I am in my root directory. Where are the files that I'm working on? They're not in here. And uh, one way to figure out where R is currently looking is to click the More button and ask it to go to the working directory. This is where R is working out of at the present moment. And I made a folder on my desktop. I called it R Basics, and I put this RMD file in there. I also created a new R project uh, using the R project option up in the top right hand corner. What I did was click new project, uh, but uh, we'll assume that you already have one of these uh, working for you because you downloaded the lab templates folder and that provides an R project file for you. But um, let me quickly show you what the what this will do. I'm just going to save this file. Now if I've closed our studio, let's see if I could find there it is R basics. Here's my folder. If you have a R project file in your folder, then if you double click it, it will open up R studio and it will set the working directory to this folder. And that can be very useful because it will be pointing R to all the files that you're working on. Uh, all right, so because I reloaded R, we no longer have uh, some of the, the document we were looking at here earlier. I'm gonna click the knit button and now I can, I, what I've done is compiled this R Markdown document into an HTML document that's much nicer to look at. And where were, we, where were we before? We were talking about what is the Files tab and what does it show you, right? Here's the Files tab. Uh, here's the document, the RMD file, that's this one loaded up in the editor window. When I pressed knit, it created a new file, the HTML file. And uh, just so you know, we can look at this file if we want in the editor, but usually we won't want to do this. It's going to show us the source code for compiling the website document that we made. And as you can see, it looks pretty messy. So we mostly won't be looking at that. But you can view it in a web browser if you click this and say open uh, view in web browser, you will see your document in a web browser. Great. Let's go back to the viewer. All right, let's ask a question. How can we copy a file? We could do that right in R. Let's say I wanted to um, make a copy of this rbasics.rmd file. I click it, go to more, press copy. And I can enter a new name, newfile.rmd, press OK. And now we've made a new file and it puts it right in the folder we're working in. So this file, if I opened it up, it will now show, uh, oh, could not save, no, I'm not sure what's going on there. Doesn't look like.
it was a major problem. Sometimes these things happen. Uh, but this document should be the exact same as the RBasics document. I'm going to close this. I'm pressing the X button. This doesn't delete the file, it just gets it out of the editor window. So let's go back and look at the viewer. Uh, how to rename a file. Let's say I wanted to change new file that RMD and give it a different name. So I click it, click more, and oops, the rename option is right here. So we're going to rename it something else, I guess. And there we have it. We've renamed it something else. And I spelled it wrong. Oops. How about we quickly rename it something else for real? There we go. How to move a file. All right. Well, if we wanted to move a file, um, we would have to, we, we would be wanting to put it in, in a different folder somewhere. As you can see, uh, there are no folders in, in the R basics folder, just these files. Let's make a new temporary folder. I'm just going to call it temp. Now here it is, there's a folder in our folder. If we click it, you can see there's nothing in there. Let's move something else into this folder. So I've clicked it, more, move, and double click on temp, press open. And now we've moved our file into this folder. back to the questions.